On the bench today is a Squire Classic Vibe. This one is absolutely gorgeous. It is, um, as you can see, black with white binding. Let's just pop the bridge out of there. And it is pretty stunning as guitars go. That is lovely. And that's a, a raised sort of silver decal on the top there. It's not a decal, it feels like a, a, some kind of inlay. This one's going to be turned into an absolute rock monster. And what I'm going to do is take this pick guard off and put a humbucker in it. Here we go. The copper shielding was added previously, so let's take this pickup out. So that's our pickup there. Continuity is good, however, where the single coil came out, I've got two small holes, so I need to cut some to cover those holes. You, once that's covered, you can use a pen or some round end object to push it in. Don't use your finger at this stage because you can cut the bejesus out of it. Time for the new pick guard. This is a pick guard I picked up from Toman. Um, it was about 17 euros, I think. It uh, is a humbucker and also it has two more holes than the previous one. So we're going to need to drill some holes in this bad boy. The pickup is a rolling mill from Iron Gear. It's the neck four wire one. And there we are. There it is. It's going to go right in there. Comes with everything you need. You've got the screws there and a little bit of foam as well. Foam comes in useful when building guitars and modern guitars. So, neck position, rolling mill, all looks well, all looks good. Parking that through. Here's our screws. If you've seen any of my previous pickup videos, you'll know that I hate this part because these screws and these springs, sorry, always tend to ping off. It's in! It's finally in! Okay, let's see how that looks. Let's see if my friend Sai will be happy with this. This hole is not lining up. It's um, slightly different to where the original pick guard was. Um, what I need to do is take the pick guard back off, fill that hole and redrill it. There's the hole, and what I'm going to do is put a matchstick in there and some wood glue and fill it up. I'm going to squeeze a little bit on here. Get that. You really don't need very much. Wipe off the excess glue with a bit of water and wait 20 minutes. There's the old control cavity. Um, and the pit guard in place. So I just wanted to check that that fitted before I did anything. What I need to do now is mark these holes and then uh, drill some new ones. I was just about to screw this down and realised that I have not shielded the back of the pit guard. Rookie mistake. So I'm going to pull that back through a bit. There. Not shielded at all. Time to check for continuity. Um, we've got a wire going between this cavity and this cavity, this green one here, you can see, or almost see, kind of poking there. Um, so let's go for it. All good, connected, wonderful. Next up, uh, I'm just going to put the pit guard in with a few screws in case we have to pop it back out again. It is, I would say, finished. However, you never know, so why make work for yourself? Notice I've got a little tape here between these two cavities, but a nice tight joint on the control plate will make sure that you don't see it. Alrighty, um, the next thing is to put the pickup into the bridge. Here's the bridge that I'm going to be using. It is not the one that was on here because the one that was on here had a slight gold appearance and we're going for an old silver and black motif. 
we're going to be working with this pickup, which is slightly hotter than the pickup that was in there. Um, as we're pairing it with a humbucker, we're going to need a little bit more output from this bridge pickup to make sure that uh, the sound is a little bit more balanced. Um, if you don't have a different bridge pickup, it's not a catastrophe. I've hit a bit of a snag. The, uh, the pickup won't go far back enough to fit in there. It doesn't quite make these holes here, don't quite make it to these four holes here. So I'm hoping by taking this wire out and poking it through there, we're going to get the little tiny extra bit of space that we need. If not, I'm going to have to take out some of this wall here and I really don't want to have to do that. Here's the problem here, that bridge is as far back as it will go, but it does not line up with these holes. Can you see here? There's the hole there, it doesn't go quite far back enough. It needs to go that way a little bit, so I have to take out quite a bit of this um, wood here. However, a little tip if you ever need to do this, is take some masking tape, put the bridge in, and mark off where that bridge covers. All around. There we go. So, although I know I need to take out quite a bit, I know not to go over these lines. And in fact, as I like to be double careful, a little bit more there, so we're a few millimeters of what we need to be. There we go. Okay, and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the control plate as a straight edge, and to measure back how far I need to go. It's about three millimeters to give us clearance. So I'm going to mark off about the same distance here with my knife. There. Ooh, a scratch. I'm going to take out that area there. And I'm going to help chisel that wood out by using a drill to make some holes. I've done a very shallow hole there just to get started. And now what I'm going to do is take a bit of tape, put the drill bit into where I want it to get to, and then mark that off there. So I know that not to drill further than this piece of tape. There we go. Okay, let's, let's give it a whirl. Okay, still not enough. I need to now, I need to take some out of this area. So that's plenty enough there. It's got lots of movement here, but I don't have enough just here. So, back to the uh, cutting board. Ooh. After an excessive amount of chiseling, um, that is now going to fit in there. It doesn't need to look too pretty because it's going to get covered in copper foil. I've kept some of the shavings and kept some of the bits here because it turns out that these outer holes of the bridge do not align. So I'm now going to have to glue those in and wait for it to dry, and then redrill new holes. Um, but the string holes align, and everything else is fine. Let's just uh, prove that's true. 
There we go, it fits, and it even has a little bit more play than it needs. So, uh, very, very happy. Um, I'm going to fill these and then wait and get back to you. So the cable's through, I just need to trim off these edges here, where I've added just a little bit too much wood. But uh, you should know that uh, too much wood is better than not enough. And there we have it. Okay, wunderbar. Now what I need to do is to find those screws that are knocking around somewhere. There they are. Now the, the middle two fit wonderfully. Just going to mark where I need to drill these holes, which honestly is not that far off the center of the old ones, but uh, far enough that if I were to drill the to draw to drill the old screw holes, it would be slightly off center. Up first is our pilot hole. The new pick guard, the new pickup is in, the new bridge is in. I'm going to finish it there for today and I'll put the control panel wiring and all the fretwork and the new nut in on the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Um, the next part will be up in about a week, unless of course this is the future, whereas you can see the next part by clicking somewhere near this, uh, near this video. I'm the Guitar Geek, thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and share and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.